It may not be so obvious that knowledge items are connected. If it's to be believed that some students like to memorise lists of facts and store them in their memory independent of each other, then it may appear that the possibility of doing so means that knowledge items can be independent. However, a number of points need to be drawn from this example to foreground the notion that it's actually impossible not to connect knowledge items at some level. Indeed, basic comprehension itself requires an existing knowledge structure and the connection of the new information within that structure. To demonstrate this point, consider your experience of this information if you heard it in a language you're not familiar with. You would still hear the modulations in the airstream, but there would be, would be nothing in your mind to make sense of that information. So, at the low level at least, we connect the incoming with the existing. Let's go a bit deeper into knowledge structures themselves. When we hear or read novel information, we're not simply just drawing on our stored memory of vocabulary and grammar items. If that were the case, we'd need to build every meaning from the ground up every time we encounter language that would be incredibly inefficient. Instead, we build concepts whose names act as shorthand for increasingly complex categories of meaning. A young child thinks that car stands for any vehicle, but that concept develops rapidly in size and sophistication. But one child's experience of car to vehicle conceptual change may be very different compared to another child's route towards sophistication. Indeed, for a vast number of complex concepts, it's highly likely that the content and structure, as well as the emotive and cognitive meanings, are not identical or even similar in many adults. This leads to the conclusion that we comprehend information differently from each other. The extent of this difference may be greater or smaller, but returning to our list memorizer, we can say that the process of memorizing lists in an unconnected manner with no reference to deeper notions of knowledge structures is an impossible act. From this, the next question is about the degree to which a person is aware of their connections. People's awareness of connections, though, is something that may be obscured by their educational experiences. If we'd enculturated into silo-type learning environments, the idea that one type of knowledge is relevant to another may be difficult for us to see. It's obvious that certain cognitive skills are highly transferable, including language, basic arithmetic and reasoning skills. However, it may surprise some that psychologists have won the Nobel Prize for economic sciences or that the results of failed science experiments are being used by the general population for purposes unimagined by the scientist prior to the experiment. When children learn about the solar system, are they encouraged to think about how that affects what foods they eat during the year? And how much moral education is given in lessons about parliamentary systems? These items are deeply connected, but unless the educational experiences clarifies them, many learners are not prompted to make those connections. The connections are there, potentially at least, but the awareness of those connections is weak. We may also ask, who has the moral authority to make connections explicit? Traditionally, academic disciplines have grown up relatively independent of each other due to their different academic concerns and methodological approaches. Given the history of the academy, this silo-differentiated approach was perhaps inevitable. But now, increasingly, there is the awareness that deeper knowledge and learning needs an interdisciplinary approach as well. This change is the result of a maturing understanding of the interconnectivity of knowledge. 
and this epistemic maturity is also available to each person when our own sense of interpersonal knowledge connections become clearer to us.